Good morning. Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. It is Tuesday, July the 9th, and we are here to look at new releases being set into the wild this week. Every day of the week, we look at a different genre. Today, we are looking at mysteries and thrillers, and there are a lot of them. So we're going to hop into it here pretty quickly. Um, quick announcements. We do have sprints tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. They go for two and a half hours. Bring your own book. Work on a project. Just close your eyes after a day. Whatever it is you'd like to do, it is time carved out for you. It is self-care time. You listen to ambiance. Do a check-in at the top of each hour. It is just uh, peaceful, easy time. Uh, I do every Tuesday and Thursday evenings and Saturday afternoons. Today, again, we're looking at mysteries and uh, thrillers. Mary says, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Another scorcher here in Virginia, like walking into a wet wool blanket. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is hot here this week. We are going to be hitting 100. Um, probably Thursday. We're hitting 90s now. I don't like it. Hi, Elena. How are you doing? All right. Let's go over here. It's Only a Game by Kelsey Yu. We're doing good, 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 good. I echo you, echo you. I don't like it either. But I have to remind myself, this winter when it was negative 30, not wind chill, that was just the temperature. This was the warmth we were dreaming about. But now we're here. <laughs> All right, this is a young adult thriller, actually. Uh, when Marie Chan ran her old life, she ran from her old life. She brought nothing with her, not even her real name. Now she lives in fear of her past being discovered. But when her online gaming team has offered a tour of their favorite game company, Marina can't resist accepting, even though she knows it might put her fake identity at risk. Then the creator of the game is murdered during their tour. The killer plans to frame Marina and her friends for the murder unless they win four rounds of a dangerous game. A game that requires them to lie, trespass, and steal. A game that could destroy everything Marina's worked so hard to build. A game that she might not survive. And it says it's perfect for fans of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I read and really enjoyed. And Slay, which I have not read. So I have no reference for that one. Hang on, copies required. So did uh, Mary, did all the plumbing stuff get done? W.E.B. Griffin has a new one called Zero Options. Oh, actually, uh, I'm sure he's passed. So this is written by Peter Kersenow, but it's Ninth in the Minute War series uh, created by W.E.B. Griffin. Dick Kennedy races to stop an assassin from disrupting a vital conference that will shape the course of World War II. November 1943. Stalin is pressing the Allies to open a second front in Europe in order to ease the pressure on the bloody grinding war in the East. Roosevelt and Churchill agree to meet the Soviet premier in Tehran. Wild Bill Donovan, the charismatic leader of the OSS, has intelligence that someone is planning to assassinate either or both of the world le Western leaders at the conference. He sends his best agent, Dick Kennedy, to thwart the plan. But how can he do that when he doesn't even know if the killer is a Nazi or an ally? Well, good question. The Hollywood Assistant. By May Cobb. 
Offered a dream job in Hollywood with a famous director and his actress wife, an insecure woman becomes their personal assistant where their secrets and lies place her in the crosshairs of a murder investigation. Cassidy Foster is heartbroken, stuck in life, and getting a little too obsessed with plants. Then, when a well-connected friend becomes sick of Cassidy's moping and gets her a gig with famous Hollywood couple Marisol and Nate Sterling, Cassidy jumps, jumps at the chance to move to sunny L.A. The Sterlings are warm and welcoming, a perfect couple. All Cassidy has to do is be available a few hours a week for errands. In return, she has access to luxury, designer clothes, a sparkling pool, great pay. You know, gift horse look. When Nate takes interest in her, asking her to read scripts he's written, Cassidy thinks this could be the key to kickstarting her writing dreams. As their business relationship grows, so does their attraction. Nate is sexy and talented, and Cassidy can't believe her luck. She is so nice. Clearly, Marisol doesn't know what she has. Maybe that's why the two are always fighting when they think Cassidy isn't around. But Cassidy learns she was hired for a different purpose. The Sterlings aren't the perfect couple. Marisol isn't the perfect wife. And when one of them is found dead, Cassidy becomes the perfect suspect. Linda Castillo has a new one. In her Kate Burkholder Amish adjacent series. This is called The Burning, 16th in series. Newlywed Chief of Police Kate Burkholder is awakened by an urgent midnight call summoning her to a suspicious fire in the woods. When she arrives at the scene, she discovers a charred body. According to the coroner, the deceased, an Amish man named Milan Schwanz, was chained to a stake and burned alive. It's an appalling and eerily symbolic crime against an upstanding husband and father. Kate knows all too well that the Amish prefer to handle their problems without interference from the outside world, and no one will speak about the murdered man. From what she's able to piece together, Swans led a deeply troubled life and had recently been excommunicated. But if that's the case, why are the Amish so reluctant to talk about him? Are they protecting the memory of one of their own, or are they afraid of something they dare not share? When her own brother is implicated in the case, Kate finds herself not only at odds with the Amish, the world of which she was once a part, but also the English community and her counterparts in, in law enforcement. The investigation takes a violent turn when Kate's life is threatened by a mysterious stranger. To uncover the truth about the death of Milan Swans, Kate must dive deep into the Anabaptist culture, peering into all the dark corners of its history, only to uncover a secret legacy that shatters everything she thought she knew about the Amish themselves and her own roots. Now, if you're thinking Amish means this is a sweet little book, it is not. It is gritty. I've read the first one in the series. It is a gritty procedural. Not finished yet, still have to replace the solar salt tank, which is leaking. They should be tackling next week when the new tank comes in. Hopefully, that will be the end. It is for my money. Oh, I hear you. Uh, I like Linda Castillo and that character. I, uh, I agree. I need to get back to it. Blood and Mascara by Colin Cranin. Iris is watching Bronze. Bronze is following Carolyn. Carolyn is sleeping with Billy. Now Billy is dead and a killer is coming for them all. That sounds like one of those logic problems I never liked. Washington, D.C., 1997. The city stumbling towards recovery after a decade of violence, drugs, AIDS, and exodus. Bronze Goldberg, a soft-boiled private detective in a hard-boiled world, scrapes out a living stalking the steps of cheating spouses while bearing the trauma of the past like an open wound. But his latest assignment, surveying the indiscretions of a stunning femme fatale, has entangled him in the murder of an up-and-coming congressman and made him the target of an unstoppable assassin. Meanwhile, the spiraling chaos of Bronze's dangerous adventures has attracted the obsessive attention of his landlord, Iris Margarin, a brilliant romance novelist who may hold the missing piece in the puzzle of Bronze's fatal past. Can Bronze survive long enough to reach the ultimate truth? And why was he named Bronze, other than an author thinking it's a cool name? Bronze. Bad Tourist by Carol Carver.
best friends, Darcy, Camilla, and Kate, escape for a post-divorce retreat in the Maldives, the perfect place to relax, reset, and embrace a fresh start in life. Darcy is learning how to be a free woman at 42. Camilla has found the perfect calling as a fitness and wellness influencer with a devoted following. And Kate is finally working on the book she was meant to write after years of telling other people's stories. Their dream getaway, the exclusive and isolated Sapphire Island Resort with luxurious, luxurious private villas, crystal clear waters, and sun-drenched white beach sand beaches, Relaxation is guaranteed, but this is no ordinary friendship, and they're not the only guests on the island with secrets. Who left the body on the beach, and who's next? I mean, seriously, littering. A propulsive and deliciously dark tale about female friendship, loyalty, and lies. And the author was able to write off the research trip to the Maldives, I am sure. All This and More by Peng Shepherd. One woman, endless options, every choice has consequences. Meek, play it safe, Marsh has just turned 45 and her life is in shambles. Her career is stagnant, her marriage has imploded, and her teenage daughter grows more distant by the day. Marsh is convinced she's missed her chance at everything, romance, professional fulfillment, and adventure, and is desperate for a do-over. She can't believe her luck when she's selected to be the star of the global sensation All This and More, a show that uses quantum technology to allow contestants the chance to revise their pasts and change their present lives. It's Marsh's only shot to seize her dreams, and she's determined to get it right this time. But even as she rises to become a famous lawyer, get back together with her high school sweetheart, and travels the world, she begins to worry that all this and more's promises might be too good to be true. Yeah, I think. Because while the technology is amazing, something seems a bit off. Can Marsh really make her life everything she wants it to be? And is it worth it? I mentioned this last night on a on a thing you know all the uh in the past year or so it's been all, every, all the concepts have been about podcasts and cold cases and blah 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 now it's being a participant in a reality show contest you will see many many hang an interesting name indeed honeycomb by S.B. Caves, Big Brother Meets Black Mirror. Amanda Pearson was once the hottest rising star in the music world. Not anymore. Washed up, broke, and directionless following a public breakdown, she is certain she will never be adored again. But she is very wrong. Her old manager calls her out of the blue with an opportunity. A week stay at an isolated mansion with five strangers, all under constant observation. Every day they must take a pill. Five people will be taking a placebo, but one person will be taking an experimental drug that they are assured has no adverse side effects. Where have we heard that before? So what's the catch? Amanda isn't sure, but the pay is too tempting to turn down. And I'm sure she's taken all kinds of other things. However, it soon becomes clear that this is no ordinary experiment. Each day, Amanda discovers more about her fellow housemates, that the old mansion holds horrifying secrets, and that there is no way out. Things you'll do for money. Here, take this experimental drug. Daniel Silva has a new one. A Death in Cornwall. This is 24th in his Gabriel Alon series. Um, I've read several in this series. I liked them. And then he kind of got on his soapbox and I stepped away. I still like the concept of it, though. Gag me with a spoon. Can't stand so-called reality shows. Such a farce. Indeed. And in books, they're just everywhere now. It's like Hunger Game con contests. Only adults. And they're dying. Well, they're dying in the other one, too. But you know what I mean. A brutal murder. A missing masterpiece. A mystery only Gabriel Allen can solve. Art restorer and legendary spy Gabriel Allen has slipped quietly into London to attend a reception at the Portal Gallery celebrating the return of a stolen self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh. 
But when an old friend from the Devon and Cornwall police seeks his help with a baffling murder investigation, he finds himself pursuing a powerful and dangerous new adversary. The victim is Charlotte Blake, a celebrated professor of art history from Oxford who spends her weekends in the same seaside village where Gabriel once lived under an assumed identity. Her murder appears to be the work of a diabolical serial killer who has been terrorizing the Cornish countryside. But there are a number of telltale inconsistencies, including a missing mobile phone. And then there is the mysterious three-letter cipher she left behind on a notepad in her study. Gabriel soon discovers that Professor Blake was searching for a looted Picasso worth more than $100 million, and he takes up the chase for the painting as only he can. With six impressionist canvases forged by his own hand and an unlikely team of operatives that includes a world-famous violinist, a beautiful master thief, and a lethal contract killer turned British spy. The result is a stylish and wildly entertaining mystery that moves at lightning speed with the cliffs of Cornwall to the enchanted island of Corsica and finally to a breathtaking climax on the very doorstep of 10 Downing Street. <clears throat> James Patterson has a new co-writing one with J.D. Barker, Confessions of the Dead. Hollows Bend, New Hampshire is a picture-perfect New England town where weekend tourists flock to see fall leaves and eat breakfast at the Stairway Diner. And let's see, the crime rate, zero, is a point of pride for Sheriff Ellie Pritchard. Pritchett. The day the stranger shows up is when the trouble starts. The sheriff and her deputy investigate the mysterious teenage girl. None of the locals can place her. She can't or won't answer any questions. She won't even tell them her name. While the girl is in protective custody, the officers are called to multiple crime scenes, leading them closer and closer to a lake outside of town that doesn't appear on any map. Dot, 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 dot. This is a 620-man thriller. Oh, I like Daniel Silva. Lots of good authors in this batch. Yeah. Some big names. The Day He Never Came Home by Andrew de Young. He conned first, but she conned harder. Reagan Peters knows her husband, John, wants to give her and her children a good life. The long hours he puts in as financial advisor prove his dedication. And despite how mysterious he is about his past, that's been enough for her to get through the hard days until the FBI shows up at their door and Reagan learns her husband has been running a Ponzi scheme, is mixed up with dangerous criminals, and has been living under an assumed identity all these years. Everything she thought she knew about her life has been a lie. This in that includes the present John gifted her the day before. That includes the present John gifted her the day before he disappeared. A lake house bought with cash and put in her name only. What a great gift! With her life falling apart, Reagan makes a split-second decision. Does she tell the FBI about the house? Yes. Or does she buy some time to forge her own path to saving herself? But one compromise inevitably leads to another, and one dangerous secret builds on the next. That makes you an accessory, honey. When her lies of omission to the FBI agents begin to raise questions, Reagan becomes inextricably embroiled in John's crimes, the true extent of which are just beginning to be revealed. Now that her comfortable life is clearly over, Reagan is learning she is capable of far more than she ever imagined. She will do anything to protect herself, her children, and their future. Anything. And I apologize, I hadn't clicked on this. That is the cover. The Confidence Games. I'll remember to click this time. There we are. Confusing Baldacci is the book, but the write up is for Patterson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Confidence Games by Tess Amy. I imagine this is a collaboration between two girls. Two female con artists must pull off the ultimate heist. Emma Oxley and Nellie Yarrow have been inseparable their whole lives. Ever since they reinvented themselves, changing their names and wiping clean their digital footprints, they have made a game of following wherever the next adventure leads and challenging themselves to thefts, street cons, and mind games. Good girls. 
Adhering to only two rules, they will only swindle men, which makes it okay, and only ones who deserve it, according to them. Emma and Nellie are secure in their reputation as the most trustworthy swindlers on the European black market, until suddenly they must play to save their own lives. Blackmailed into stealing a priceless bracelet from a high-security exhibit, Emma will re-examine everything she believed to be true. This heist takes her far beyond her comfort zone, and she and Nellie will need allies among the glitzy bejeweled gathering in London in order to survive. Will they be able to do the right thing before it's too late? They haven't done the right thing their entire lives. Why would they do it now? I know, I know. Our kind of game. 2019. Stella Parker has a life she's always wanted. A loving husband, two happy children that gave up that she gave up her thriving law career to raise and a beautiful house in the Tony suburbs of Washington, D.C. But when her neighbor Gwen shows up at her door claiming to know things about her, Stella's life is thrown into turmoil and she's forced to reckon with the dark secret upon which she's built her life. 1987. Julie waits yearns to be a cheerleader a gateway to a world of normalcy with best friends and sleepovers an escape hatch from life with her widowed mother the terrible men she attracts and the upheaval caused by their abrupt constant moves hang on a second my tablet is doing wonky things here we go sorry about that uh ch -ch 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 -ch. When, but when her mother decides those relationships are over, the past becomes a forbidden subject that Julie can never revisit. As Stella probes deeper into what brought Gwen to her door, the answer and who Julie is to her become increasingly terrifyingly clear. All right. We've got four more. We will save those for Friday. And I'll look into that Waldachi Patterson thing. Maybe they messed up. We'll double check that. All right, that is all we have time for today. Like I say, we'll do the other four on Friday, which is Green Form Friday. I will keep track of which ones we did not get to. Uh, again, I do have sprints tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. Bring your own book, work on a project. I'm going to be crocheting. Um, and then tomorrow we'll be looking at the new releases that are romance. Hope you have a very good Tuesday. Please stay cool. It is summer pretty much all across the country. Stay hydrated. Read good books. And as the banner's about to say, don't be a bookworm. Be a bookie monster. <laughs> om nom nom. Have a good day and God bless. <laughs>